It's Vlog Friday! Vlog Friday, Vlog Friday, it is Vlog Friday. Doesn't work, does it? Still don't have my theme song. But I'm saving, I'm saving up money to get a special kind of editing software so that I can um, add music and maybe some special effects. I don't know. I just want to amp it up a bit. It'll have a vlog amped up Friday one day. Maybe. Oh, I hope you're doing well today. It is June 12th. And this is my um, four months, four month marker of doing a vlog. Time flies. It just flies. I can't believe I started in February. Oh, vlog <laughs> every Friday. And yes, I did. I missed one. One. But I made up for it on Saturday, didn't I? Mm hmm. Oh, I wanted to talk to you a little bit today on June 12th, my fourth month vlog, Friday, Friday, and talk about God's will. How do we know God's will? How do we know God is directing us? What does God's will look like? I know it's a tough question. I addressed it a little bit when I talked about um, the dandelions or weeds and the old woman with the oranges, but I wanted to get a little bit more specific here. In my morning devotions, I was reading um, David Wilkerson. And if you don't get that David Wilkerson's daily devotion, I highly recommend it. It's always excellent, always timely. And David Wilkerson was talking about sometimes, most of the time, to know God's will, we really have to wait on the Lord. It's important that um, he directs us and guides us as we're waiting on him. Excuse me, and I know there's times in my life, you know, where my face was buried in some nasty shag carpet. And I just would lay on my belly, just lay on my face before the Lord and say, I'm not moving till I know what you want me to do. And that kind of desperation, I think, is kind of like the birthing of God's will in our lives. Just like um, Jacob wrestling with the angel. I'm not I'm not letting go till you bless me. It's that kind of tenacity. And sometimes it's required. That's required of us. I don't know why. It also, uh, God's will has a very strange synergy. Okay, think about Joshua doing the battle. And while Joshua was battling, the Lord told Moses to keep his arms raised. Remember? What an interesting synergy. So as long as Moses had his arms raised, the battle was won. Joshua was winning. The Hebrew children were winning the battle. But if Moses' arms got tired, and whose wouldn't, and he lowered them, then the enemy would win. The opposing army would win. So Aaron and her came and propped up his arms, remember? That's an interesting synergy, isn't it? The synergy of man with God. So we've got that kind of element to God's will. It takes a part, you know, some part we play, we have a part to play in fulfilling and doing God's will. So we wait on him. Then we try to be active. But the best part is uh, Jeremiah 29, 13. You will find me when you seek me, if you seek me with your whole heart. And that's, I believe, vital, vital to remember. That we need to seek God with our whole heart. So, I've talked to you a lot about being single and an old maid missionary and all the ways that God directed. But what does that look like as a married woman under the authority of my husband? And living in America, things get a little bit different. I've never struggled with my faith more than when I lived in the United States. Living in the United States is so easy and, well... It used to be. It used to be so easy and things were so convenient and I found myself very self-reliant. And that's not a good place to be. That's the great thing about me being on the mission field is for someone like me, it it required total and complete reliance on God. And that was a wonderful place to be. So I want to tell you a little bit about Lithuania. Lithuania is the flag in the background. My students gave me that flag um, my last day of classes in 2015. And today is important because June 12th is not only my four month anniversary of doing a vlog, it's also the anniversary of me leaving for Lithuania in 2010. I moved to Lithuania in, on June 12th, 2010. So, okay, 
my husband and I used to work for an organization, and that organization placed evangelicals with PhDs in secular universities outside of North America. We had university professors all around the world. I think probably at our peak, we were around 60, 60 university professors teaching a broad range of disciplines, everything from mathematics to physics, all the way to English literature or even religion and Christianity or philosophy. So this had been our life's work. I married into the work and we gave our lives to it. One of the roles we played in the organization was to call upon the professors as they were serving in the foreign field. And we would go and check up on them. I would make a list if there was anything they needed. We would try to bring them whatever goods or supplies. Sometimes it was peanut butter, whatever they couldn't find. And we would bring the supplies and check in with them, not just for accountability, but hopefully to minister to them and encourage their hearts. And we were on such a trip back in 2007, just Daryl and me, traveling around mostly Eastern Europe at this particular trip, though we had professors all over the world. So we landed in a little place called Vilnius, Lithuania. I had never been. Daryl had been several times, and he loved it. But I didn't know much about Lithuania. So we'd been in Romania. We flew to Vilnius, Lithuania, and I got very, very sick. We were supposed to take a bus to Klaipeda, which is across the little country of Lithuania, three million people. When I say small country, it's small. But do remember, it was the first uh, nation to declare its independence from the Soviet Union. So small, but mighty. So I had to stay in Vilnius. And Daryl found me a little pension. It's what's called a pension. It's a small hotel. And it was ran by these two sisters, two elderly sisters. So Daryl took me to the pension put me up in the room and said, I'll get back as soon as possible. He still had to go to Klaipeda. There were meetings there. He was meeting with our professor. Plus, I think he was giving a lecture. There was a lot going on in Klaipeda, but I couldn't make the trip. So as I laid in that little pension, feeling so lousy, so sick, those two women, the two sisters who ran the pension, took amazing care of me. They brought me soup. They brought me tissues. They check in on me. They would um, service my room twice, I think, twice a day just to make sure I was doing all right. And I was so grateful to their kindness. And they didn't speak any English, and I don't speak any Lithuanian. But we all kind of spoke a little bit of Russian, and that's how we communicated. So finally, after about, I guess, four days there, I decided to take a walk and get some fresh air. I was starting to feel a little bit better. And I walked up to a small restaurant and thought, I'll just get a bowl of soup, maybe some hot tea. And I went into the restaurant. The girl spoke perfect English. I got a small meal. And uh, when I finished, I gave her my credit card and they didn't take credit cards. So she said, well, just go up the street and there's an ATM there. So I walked up the street and the ATM was out of order, not working. So I walked back to the uh, restaurant and I said, I don't have any money. The ATM's not working. I, I don't know what to, how to pay for this meal. And she goes, don't worry about it. If you're in town sometime and you've got the cash, just bring it by. But don't worry about it. It's all right. Who'd ever heard of such a thing? So I went back to the pension and waited for Daryl. And we got ready and went back to the United States. And on the flight back, I told Daryl, I love that place. I know I didn't get to see much of it. And I didn't interact with anybody but the girl at the restaurant and the two old sisters who ran the pension. But there is a beauty there, and I really liked it. And I felt like I had kind of bonded with Lithuania. So that was 2007. Well, my 50th birthday was in 2009. And my husband, who is very careful with money, one, because we raise support, and every dime that comes into our hands, we know someone sacrificed to provide our salary. So we were very careful with our funds. And he said, look, I've got tons of airline miles and tons of hotel points so for your 50th birthday actually you name anywhere you want to go in the world and we can do it for free practically free with my airline miles and my hotel points and I said okay I want to go back to Lithuania and he said, really? And I go, yeah, I want to go to Vilnius. And oddly, it had been declared the European capital thousand years old. They were celebrating a thousand year old uh, birthday or anniversary. And it had been declared as the European capital 
of the year in 2009. So I said, I want to go to Vilnius. I want to go to Lithuania. That's what I want to do for my 50th birthday. So we landed in Vilnius, and Daryl said, now, there's just one condition. There are some meetings I need to have here, and you can come along with me if you want to, but while I'm in Lithuania, I need to make it count, and I need to meet some people in Vilnius, and I need to meet some people in Klaipeda. And I said, I'm all in. So one of the meetings he had was he was trying to place a professor in Vilnius. We had uh, several professors in Klaipeda, but we didn't have any professors in Vilnius. And he'd heard about this one place called the Vilnius Pedagogical University. So he said, I'm going to go meet there with the rector. Do you want to come along? And I said, yeah, let's go. So we walk into the building. It was um, probably about 100 years old. And I think the building was maybe built in the 1930s. Very Soviet. It felt very familiar. It looked a lot like the university that I worked for in Moscow. And so I walk in and there is a familiarity and we go up the steps and we meet with the rector and there were two women who were his like um, vice something and vice something and the other different, you know, these, these second in command women, the second tier. And everything was like Moscow for me. I mean, the rector was exactly like my rector in Moscow. These two women sitting on either side of me were women I was very familiar with. And I think they felt a kindred spirit too because they would like put hands on me or, or put a cookie at my, for my tea. You know, I had a teacup and they put cookies there. And, and I could tell, you know, that we were all kindred spirits, okay? So we had the meeting and it was really a good meeting. And he said, I'm willing to you know, place your professor here. I would like to have your professor here in communications. So let's start the ball rolling. And we were almost done. And I had to use the restroom so badly. This is a restroom story. I have too many of these. So I was sitting there and I whispered over the, the woman sitting to my um, right. And I said, I need to use the ladies room. And she goes, toilet. And I go, yeah, I need to use the toilet. She goes, no problem. So she takes me out of the office during the meeting and points me upstairs and the restroom was upstairs. So I go up there and I find the restroom, the toilet, and I go in and I and there's nobody around you and I just use the toilet and everything's fine. But I hear the bell ring, that between classes bell and the bell rang. And so when I was coming out of the ladies room, the hall was packed with students. They were coming and going and they were so beautiful and I stood there looking at them and they kind of slowed down everything kind of slowed down as these students were going past me and I heard very clearly the Lord say these are your students these students belong to you and it was true the Lord captured my heart in that hallway, standing in the ladies' room doorway, as I looked at these students. When I walked down the hall, Daryl was waiting for me at the bottom of the stair, and his meeting was over, and I went down the stairs, and I was bawling. I was crying. And he goes, what happened? Are you okay? What's wrong? And I said, Daryl, I belong here. This is my university. And he said, well, I don't, I don't know what you mean, but let's get on out of the building. I think I was probably a little bit too uh, sobby, crying, messy. So we got out of the building and we're walking back to our hotel. And he said, I don't know what that means. And I said, I know you run a beautiful organization that God has built and your work is significant and important. But all I can tell you is I believe God is calling me to this university. He told me these are my students. That was in 2009. We go to Klaipeda. We meet a university there. And we make a lot of friends. We see our professors that are working there. And let me just say our trip to Lithuania for my 50th birthday was fabulous. We had a wonderful time. Excellent weather. The hotel was excellent. We ate lots of good food. And with them having their big celebration, thousand year anniversary of the start of Vilnius, um, I felt like they were celebrating my birthday. They weren't, but I pretended. So we got home and I prayed about it and I asked Daryl to pray with me about it. I said, I really want to find a way to get to teach in Vilnius. 
So I started just sending my uh, my curriculum, my um, CV. It's it's like a resume. I just started sending my resume to all the universities in Vilnius, just blind, you know, and sending a little letter, emailing everything, emailing to anyone in everyone. Hey, I would like to teach at university. Didn't hear back from anybody. And the Vilnius Pedagogical University, I think I probably, I don't want to exaggerate, but I think I emailed them probably 10 to 15 times saying, I want to teach at university. I was there recently. This is my CV. Here's my qualifications. This is what I'd like to teach. And they had a philology department, English philology, as well as applied linguistics. So it was right in my field. Nothing. So in... Um, the summer of 2010, around May actually, I got a email from a friend of mine in Klaipeda and she said, we're starting a program, a master's degree program, could you come for the summer in Klaipeda and teach in this master's degree program for TESOL? And I said, I will. I didn't even ask Daryl. I just said, yeah, I will. So I tell Daryl, I'm leaving on June 12th <laughs> and I'm going to go teach in uh, Klaipeda. And um, I'll be gone most of the summer. And he's like, what? What? And I go, yeah, sorry. <laughs> this is a dream come true for me. <laughs> I love you, honey, but I'm going to Lithuania. But it's just for the summer. So <clears throat> I don't recommend that. It's probably not the best thing to do. So I packed up my stuff. And on June 12th, I went to Klaipeda. And I taught there and loved it. Loved every minute of it. And the university there had an opening for the fall. So I emailed Daryl and I said, I'm, I've accepted a job in Klaipeda for the fall. I'm going to be teaching at this university. Do you want to join me if I have, perhaps a little bit? This is a horrible story. There's a good ending, but it's a horrible story. So Daryl said, I can do, as long as I've got internet, I can do my job practically anywhere. And we have a lot of professors in Europe. So he said, yeah, and he joined me and we started off in our first Lithuania adventure. And then we started out in Klaipeda. Uh, I got very sick in Klaipeda. I had to go home for a surgery. And then while I was in the United States, my father passed away. So in the spring of 2011, I found myself in pretty bad shape after my surgery. And then with my father's death, there was a lot going on. So what I did at home was just start sending my CV out. And we had placed a professor at the Vilnius Pedagogical University. So I sent my CV to him and said, could you walk this around? Could you give this to somebody? I want to teach at that university. God has called me to teach at that university. And I got to get there. So my friend walked it around, but nobody was taken. I think they were afraid to hire me. I mean, it was one thing to hire our friend, which we had great support for and everything, but for just someone just to hire out of the department, a department chair say, yeah, I'm going to take this foreigner in. I don't think they'd ever done that. They'd taken uh, scholars, different kinds of exchange program like Erasmus or, you know, the different scholars from the United States had come, but Fulbright had had some people there, but just to hire somebody off the street, they hadn't done that. So, in May of 2011, I got an email from a man named Linus, Selmas, uh, Linus Selmastritis. And he asked me if I would be interested in teaching. And I said, yes, absolutely. So we did a Skype call. And I said, I can be there as soon as you want me to be. And we headed off that summer to uh, Vilnius. And we lived in Vilnius for five years. And it was wonderful. And Daryl and I had a great experience. And we're so glad that we heard from the Lord. And we're so glad we obeyed the Lord. And it was a great um time there. We loved our students. We loved our colleagues. We loved Lithuania. We loved our church. We had a great church that we attended. We just made a lot of friends and we had a wonderful apartment with a wonderful landlord. I mean, God opened every door and I fell in love with those students, every single one of them. I've had, they were bright and kind and energetic and good. It was just a wonderful experience. And then it was time for us to come home. How do I know? The Lord said, it's time to come home. And I went into Daryl's office there in Vilnius. And I said, I think the Lord is calling us back home. And he said, let's pray together about it. And we knelt and we prayed and we asked the Lord to make it clear. But it was, it was very clear. It was time to come home. And thank God we did. Uh, when we arrived back home in July 2015, um, all hell broke loose in our family, in our country, in our 
in our lives. There was just one thing after another, and we needed to be home. And I'm grateful that we've been home. It's been important um, for us to be here for our family and for our friends. Lots happened. But I tell this story, and it's this long-winded story, that when God places something in your heart, and like he did for me in that hallway of that university, and I started feeling him and, and having that sense of, this is where God wants me. Then I talked to Daryl about it, and we prayed about it, but I didn't let it go. And I did everything, just like Aaron and her with Moses, I did everything to keep my hands up in the air, to do my part. My, this is a synergy I was talking about, the role that I must play to give out my resume, to make inquiries, to pursue what I believe God was calling me to do. And then when opportunities happen, to say yes to those opportunities and move on them and to do that. And getting us to Klaipeda, then eventually help Daryl understand that we could do the work while we were in Lithuania. And then being able to get the job in Vilnius at the Pedagogical University. It worked out really well, and it was definitely, we knew we were in the center of God's will. And let me tell you, without a doubt, every single day I walked by that spot outside the women's room, outside the toilet, every single day I would look at that little square square footage. I would look down on the floor, and I would say, God has called me here. I know that he has called me here. It was kind of a burning bush, and, and I kept going back and going, that's where the Lord called me. Oh, how do we know God's will? How do we do God's will? Well, back to what David Wilkerson said, wait on the Lord. We have to wait on him with tenacity, with that kind of, I've just got to touch the hem of his garment, or just like Jacob wrestling with the angel, I won't leave until I know what your will is. And then there's that idea of synergy, that there's a part we're to play in knowing what God's will is for our lives, but doing God's will. What is it that we're supposed to do? What does our hand raising look like? And then finally, being sure, resting sure, that in Jeremiah 29, 13, the prophet says, you will seek me, speaking the voice of God. You will seek me and you will find me when you seek me with all of your heart. And that's how we know God's will. And that's how we do God's will. It's his uh, joy to give us direction. He said, I will be the voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. Well, this has been a Vlog Friday. I hope it encouraged your heart and blessed you. Barbara Schnabel, thank you so much for sending me the emails. I feel so connected with you, and I'm so grateful for the encouraging words. And thank you to Mary Lou for your encouraging words. I get great emails, wonderful messages, Facebook messages. It means so much to me. If you love Vlog Friday and if you love being a part of it, please give me a thumbs up or leave a comment and try to encourage people to subscribe. I appreciate your subscription and I hope that you'll encourage your friends to subscribe as well. Okay, so I love you. I appreciate you. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. We're going out to Lake Perry to celebrate my granddaughter Athena's 10th birthday. We're going to go celebrate with her on the lake. And I hope you have a wonderful weekend too. Blessings and I'll see you next Vlog Friday. Bye-bye.